Hey guys, Steve from Unexplored Films here, back with another filmmaking tutorial, and today we are smashing through glass and jumping out of windows. So this is an effect shot that I'd been wanting to try for a little while. It's basically similar to something that you would see in an action film where characters jump through a window or fall off a ledge and the camera actually tilts down so that you can see where they fall. Now the first thing to say is this is definitely not the easiest or most basic way to film a window smash effect. I've seen versions of this effect just done on a tripod or as a sequence of shots where it just cuts between one shot inside and one shot outside the house. But I wanted to make this look like a single unedited long take because I love it when films use long takes instead of quick cuts in their action scenes, I just think it looks so much more impressive, plus I'm always trying to make these effects the very best they can be just using the tools I already have. And if you're enjoying these DIY Hollywood effect tutorials, please subscribe and you will get to see some more. So I designed this sequence as a shot with a moving camera that would follow the subject through the broken window and tilt down to see where he landed. So if you don't want to stitch a lot of shots together, this is probably not the right effect to try. But here's how I worked out I could do it. Firstly, I broke the sequence down into the elements that could be filmed for real. And I came up with a sequence of five key shots that I figured I could probably cut together and give them the appearance of one long take. Now because we had to fling the camera around pretty quickly and we needed some wide angles, we decided to shoot the effect entirely on the DJI Osmo action, which we mounted on the end of a pole. The first shot establishes the character is in the building and is trying to escape. This sets the scene and proves that the character is inside the room at the beginning. The camera does a whip pan towards the window when I move past it. The second shot basically picked up at the whip pan and continued quickly towards the window, only this time without the figure. This was designed to give us a clean plate of the room and the window. For the third shot we headed outside as we needed more space and set up a green screen and some cardboard boxes to create a soft area for landing. This is because the third shot was me performing the run and the jump which is eventually going to look like I'm doing it through the window. So this was pretending to jump through the window frame and then out of sight. We were kind of guessing with the distance and the geography and the choreography with this one but we just did enough takes until we figured that one would probably work. And for this I increased the shutter speed slightly on the camera to give me a cleaner outline for removing the green screen. Now I mounted the camera on a small sports tripod and taped it to the outside of the window facing down at the ground. This was so that I would have a perfectly static shot of me performing the landing. By jumping off the final few rungs of the ladder, I was able to perform the fall and the reaction looking up at the window. So we did several takes of this until again I thought I probably had one that would work. And although the ladder was in shot for this, and in fact my behind the scenes camera tripod, I thought I could probably remove those later. For the fifth and final shot, I manually tilted the camera up and down a few times until I had a pretty good blurry tilt down from the view looking dead ahead out of the window to down at the ground. And this is very similar to the method I used in my superhero landing video, and if you haven't seen that one yet, be sure to check it out as well. So once I'd filmed everything, I headed into my edit bay and loaded the clips up in Adobe Premiere Pro. I started by choosing my favourite takes and putting them in order on the timeline, starting with shot 1, then we're going to cut to a combination of shots 2 and 3 of the empty window and the figure jumping in front of the green screen, and then into shot 5 of the tilt down, finally finishing with shot 4 of the landing. So I trimmed these clips down in Premiere and tried to get the timing right, and then moved them into After Effects to build the final shot. And you can do this by selecting your clips, right clicking and go to to replace with After Effects composition. This will move them all into After Effects in exactly the same places and you can continue working there. Now some of what I'm going to be doing you can do in Premiere as well, but for anything with a lot of layers, and this was a lot of layers, I prefer After Effects because I think it just gives me more control. So the first thing I did was extend the clip of the figure running into the room over the clip of the empty room. And by turning the opacity down to halfway, I could neatly line one up on top of the other in exactly the same place. This is so that the whip pan is going to help disguise the join between the shot with the figure and the shot without the figure. Next I used the pen tool to create a mask around the figure running into the room. This means that now we have the figure running into the room as a completely separate layer on top of the shot of the empty room facing the window. Next I took the shot of me performing the jump outside and tried my best to line up the figure in this shot with the figure inside the room. This is because at some point between the whip pan and the window we are actually going to do a subtle blend to get from one figure to the other. Once I'd lined up the figures pretty well and thought I had the timing pretty good with jumping towards the window, I used key lights to get rid of the green screen and refined the matte a little bit using the settings under screen matte. 
This provided a pretty clean key around the figure. Of course, the problem was that the green screen wasn't nearly big enough, so I had to mask out the rest of the figure again using the pen tool. And you could probably also use the rotoscope tool for this if you prefer. This now gave me a clean layer of the figure performing the jump, which I could drop in over the layer of the window. I had to do a quick bit of colour correcting to darken it right down, then I started doing a bit more creative masking to blend the two figures together so that there isn't a single frame where one changes to the other, but you've already started to see the second figure before the first one has ended. So this was just down to a lot of trial and error and just trying to make the movement look smooth. So after a while I'd got that to a pretty good point where one figure changes to the other and you can't really see the change and I raised the brightness back to its normal level when the figure gets closer to the window. Now I didn't actually use the real view out of the window, partly because it's actually three windows and it has these plastic pillars down the middle. So I cut out the entire window right down to the windowsill using the pen tool and keyframed it. This now gave me the shot of the empty room but with no view visible through the window. What I could then do was take a freeze frame of the beginning of the tilt down shot and actually use that as the view that is going to appear. So now I could basically line up the freeze frame of the view over the original view through the window. So I just worked backwards and manually keyframed the position and the scale. And as the camera started to move around the corner and the image wouldn't have looked realistic, I turned on the 3D effect and keyframed the Y axis to actually spin the image slightly. Finally, a bit of colour and motion blur helped make this look like it was an overexposed view through a window at the beginning of the shot. On a side note, if you think the freeze frame isn't wide enough to cover the edges, you could build a digital extension to this by taking multiple photos in different directions. And if you want to see how to do that, watch my tutorial on how to transition from a drone shot to a gimbal shot when you move through a window, because it's exactly the same process I did for the interior in that video. Once the camera is through the window, I could then unfreeze the tilt down to match the angle of the shot of the figure landing. So now I had to find a way of blending the green screen figure back to the figure who lands on the ground. So I masked out the figure that was about to land on the ground and keyframed it upwards to line up with the other figure. And then I just had to do a lot of trial and error trying to blend the two figures together. You might be able to stretch and squash one of the figures or you might want to use the puppet pin tool where you can actually manipulate different parts of the figure in different directions. So now I basically had the real figure in the building morphing into the green screen figure, morphing again into the figure landing on the outside of the building. Next I just covered up the ladder and the camera tripod by using part of the clip where they weren't there there to create another layer to sit on top. Next I created some breaking glass by adding a new solid and just made it very very light blue. I then added the shatter effect, changed the shape from bricks to glass, changed the repetition to 50, the extrusion depth to 0.1, and then under physics I changed gravity to 10, and then I keyframed the radius from 0 to 0.4 about 10 frames later. Then if you change the view to rendered you will see what After Effects has created. This gave me a fairly basic shatter effect on the solid so now I just turned the opacity right down to about 30% to make it transparent and look more like glass. And in order to make this more realistic, I also added some real glass shatter from Video Copilot's Action Essentials, which I've had for a long time. And on here, you can actually see some light shining on parts of the glass and it looks less fake because it's a real element. Next, I wanted to add some pieces of glass landing, but I couldn't really find any. So I created my own as a layer in Photoshop using some stock images of glass and then cut these out as masks and just timed them to land in various places near the figure. As some finishing touches, I used a colour solid to create a shadow for the figure running into the room and also another one on the windowsill and also one under the cutout of the figure landing. And then I finally made a very subtle reflection of the figure in the glass by duplicating the jump and just turning the opacity really, really low. Finally, when the figure has landed, I used the wiggle expression tool to add some artificial camera movement. If you select your layer and alt click on the stopwatch by position, type in wiggle, open brackets and type a number, this first number is going to denote your speed and then a comma and then a second number which is how many movements you want it to make during that time. And then if you close brackets it will apply that motion. So with a bit of trial and error you can find a speed and a number of movements that creates a natural looking camera wobble. And I also added some artificial zooms as if the camera person had reached the window and was zooming in to get a better look at the figure walking away. And so then it was pretty much down to just sound design. So I added some loud glass breaking to really sell the window smash and some dinosaur noises at the beginning to give me a really good reason to want to jump out of a window. And that is how you jump through a window, smashing the glass and landing outside with the camera following the entire action in a single handheld shot. And if you enjoyed this one, why not drop a comment for what Hollywood effect you would like to see recreated next. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. Please hit that subscribe button and you will see some more of these. I have been Steve from Unexplored Films and I will see you next time.